Hi everyone, welcome to the Laser Channel where we learn, create, and share. In today's video, I'm going to be color marking 304 stainless steel that has a matte finish using a 30 watt MOPA laser machine. This is the GI30 by Monport. Let's start with basic color marking, keeping it as simple as possible. Let's not fall down a rabbit hole of settings. The key to success with color marking stainless steel is the consistency of the machine setup and documentation of the light burn settings. Here's what we're going to look for when color marking that stainless steel. I'm going to be finding out the true focus of my laser machine down to the work material. I'm then going to defocus the laser machine head by moving it up three millimeters. The settings that I generate for the stainless steel, I want to make sure that I'm always using that same stainless steel. The settings that I'd use for a stainless steel tumbler will often be a little bit different than what I would use for this placard. I'll also need to know the lens size on the machine. They're always printed around the bottom edge. Mine happens to be 150 millimeter squared. Different size lenses and different manufacturer lenses are going to need slightly different settings to color mark the stainless steel. Lastly, there's going to be settings within Lightburn that are going to impact the color marking that we get. And those are going to be in the order of importance are the power level, the Q pulse value, the line interval, the frequency, that can pretty much stay the same, and the speed, that too can pretty much stay the same value. In just a minute, we're gonna start taking a look at some test charts within Lightburn software. We're also going to see next to my computer, I have a journal book that I'm going to record some settings that aren't saved within Lightburn software. Those are gonna be things like the lens size that I have, how much I defocus the laser machine, and even the type or the vendor of 304 stainless steel that I'm using. We're inside Lightburn software, and I'm gonna throw up on the screen the settings where we get the most action when we're trying to color mark stainless steel. I'll let you pause that if you need to so that you can jot those down. I'm also going to share with you my settings that I use for black marking, white marking, and then putting a mirror or polish finish on the stainless steel. I'm gonna have that at the very end of the video because those settings are going to be very different than what we're going to be running on our test chart. The first thing I need to do before I start typing settings in for the materials test is I need to know the true focus of my laser machine. To find this out, I am going to run a continuous engraving on some sample material while I move the laser head up and down. And I'm going to find that perfect focus when I'm getting the most amount of sparks off this material and when that engraving noise is the loudest. For that engraving, I drew a simple circle that's about five millimeters in diameter. I have my settings off to the side here. And I have this box checked, run continuously. That will give me time to adjust the head up and down for that perfect focus. And this is what that perfect focus is going to look like. With the true focus of the laser set, I can now defocus the laser head by moving it up three millimeters. Defocusing the laser by that three millimeters, it's often overlooked, but it's really one of the most important steps to getting successful color marking on stainless steel. I'm now ready to create a materials test. For that, I'll navigate to laser tools, materials test. The Lightburn material test generator is going to give us two variables that make up our test chart. I recommend using power and Q pulse. We'll see on the screen my power, I'm ranging from 15% to 80%. And the Q pulse, I recommend going from five to 45. Let's check out what I would call the global settings that are going to be fixed during this test. I'm going to be running a speed of 1000, a frequency of 2000. The Q pulse, that's gonna be variable. The power, that too is going to be variable. We're going to see the line interval. I'm going to be using 0 0.001. 
this looks good. For the text that it's going to print on what the power levels are and the Q values are, we'll check that out. I recommend using these values, a speed of 50, a frequency of 25, a Q pulse of 200, a max power of 35%, and a line interval of 0 0.0254. I'm going to cross hatch that, and I like to have the scan angle at 45 degrees. That looks good. We can check out the preview. This would all look good. I've already ran this before the video because as we take a look at the estimated time, these test charts do take a long time to make, but it's an important investment with learning how to set up and run the machine. As a part of making this test chart, I've also recorded in my journal book what I kept as those global variables and what I kept as the variables, in this case, that power in the Q pulse. I've also recorded the size of the lens, how much I defocus the laser by, and where I source the stainless steel from. Before I start my test chart, I want to make sure that the stainless steel is clean, especially from any fingerprints. Fingerprints will show through on any color marking. My favorite method for cleaning the stainless steel is a simple paper towel and denatured alcohol. Here's a very nice looking test chart and we're going to see with the Q pulse down here at about seven as I've got some very nice bold and brilliant colors up at the power level starting at about 43% and topping out at about 80. We'll also see that we get some nice softer pastel colors as we move on. Next, I'd like to reproduce one of the colors off of my test chart. I've typed those settings in Lightburn. I have those up on the screen. I'll put some glasses on and let's color mark some stainless steel. Next, I'm going to move towards some more basic colors of jet black, a frosted white, and then like a mirrored finish, almost a polished effect on the stainless steel. I'm going to start with that jet black, and I have those settings up on the screen right now. Here's my settings for frosted white color marking. That's not a color marking I use that often because it's a very similar color to the stainless steel itself. Although every once in a while, I do run across a surface finish on stainless steel where that frosted white does make sense. Next, I'm gonna share my settings for a mirror-like finish on stainless steel. Let's check these out. I have that nice blue purple look I was looking for, that jet black. This one does take a little bit longer, but personally, I think it's well worth the wait to get this beautiful black color marking. Next to that is my little used uh, white frost engraving on stainless steel. And next to that, I think is the coolest one. And that is that polished mirror-like finish. We can definitely see that when I move my finger back and forth. If you'd like to explore more settings and create even more test charts, which I definitely encourage you to do, here's some of the settings that I would recommend changing. We'll edit the material settings. And these are what I call again, the global settings. I would recommend changing the frequency from 200, maybe go as low as about 180 kilohertz, but more so, I recommend maybe trying 225 or even 250 kilohertz. The speed I'd recommend, you could go down to about 800 millimeters per second, or you could go as high as 1200 or even 1500 millimeters per second. The line interval, I'd suggest changing that from 0.001 to 0.002 as we see here, or even going as high as 0.005. The variables for the power and the Q pulse, I do recommend keeping these around in the same area. These do have the biggest impact, I think, for making color on stainless steel. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like, subscribe, or ring that notification bell. 
It's a great way to support the channel, but more so, it's a great way to connect content like this with other great viewers just like you. Until next time, learn, create, and share.